Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden. Welcome to today's Captain's Blog. It is Saturday, October 8th, and let's bang out some viewer mail. Mobius1Ace5 writes in with, weren't you going to grow an epic mustache for a donation? I did. I grew facial hair for one week. It was hell, and I don't ever want to do it again. But I did it, and yeah, so that was that. Um, and the dude never did send in a hundred bucks that he said he was gonna. So, hey, last time I trust somebody to do something like that. 10OL writes in, hi, Chris Bowden. Hi, 10OL. Are you interested in radio tubes? Yes, we are. Um, he's got tubes if we're interested for the museum. Yes, we collect all kinds of old vacuum tubes, especially big ones. Um, I have a special place in my heart for really big vacuum tubes. Stuff like the 4-1000As, things like that. The ones, you know, big enough that you could have a goldfish in it. You know, big, big vacuum tubes. Kitty1992 writes in, Just curious, what's your job that you pay your own bills with? Actually, I'm a stripper. I'm a mime. I'm a midget wrangler. On the weekends, I'm a fire truck. Honestly, I'm an astronaut. You know when you go to a concert and you see the dudes all dressed in black that run back and forth across the stage fixing stuff? That's me. I'm a cowboy. I'm actually the fifth Beatle. I'm a celebrity spokesmodel for Speedo. I'm an underwear model for Calvin Klein. I'm a stunt double for Captain Kirk. Actually, this is my day job. Actually, this is my day job. This is what I do all day, every day. I average right around, I don't even know how many hours a week anymore. <laughs> um, my workday starts at about eight o'clock. Um, I do my office work and classes and stuff like that until 11. I do lunch at 11. I'm at the lab typically at noon. I'm here until exhaustion, which <laughs> uh, the earliest I tend to leave here is shortly after 5. It's not at all uncommon for me to be here until 8, 9, 10, 11 at night. Um, I have a very boring life. I come here and I work all day. I go home and edit, and then I, I go to bed pretty much. I do night. I tend to do night snack at like 11 o'clock and then crash at midnight and then lather, rinse, repeat. I really have no social life outside of the geek group. I don't get out much. This is this is my world and I'm okay with it. Laser Geek writes in with Chris, what happened to your Gerber artifact? It's in my pocket. I just happened to, it was easier to grab my big Gerber the other day. All right, the winner of yesterday's trivia contest is M. Sylvain. 59, who wrote in, this bag is used by electric line workers. They climb up the lines with the bag containing the tools, bolts, and small parts they will need when working up there. That's correct. This is a nose bag, and this, it, now, it was kind of a misleading question in that what is a nose bag? Well, a nose bag is a thing for, you know, horses. You know, then they put it for the horse. And the horse eats out of a nose bag, like that. This particular type of nose bag, though, is used by utility workers and by climbers. I am a climber and I do I do a lot of work at altitude on electrical things. I tend to do radio towers and things like that. So that's why I have a nose bag. All right, so that pretty much covers uh, viewer mail. There's a couple other little things, but nothing major. I know I did too many jump cuts on the video. I'm still learning how to do this whole thing. I'm trying to make this segment somewhat more entertaining and there is nothing in the world more boring than a talking head. So. I'm adding a little bit of jump cuts and I just, I was half awake and I've been doing work all day and I just went nuts on editing. I over-edited it and there were too many jump cuts and it's kind of an epileptic video. So yeah, I'll, we'll get there. I mean, if you go back through the captain's blogs, you can see the entire progression of me learning how to edit video. So you guys have fun, more as it happens. What'd you guys think of that? <laughs> now let's make some explosions.
Knock them good. Ready? Fire. Okay, so what we've got here is the coolest grill you've ever seen. It's just a big pipe with a lot of holes in it. And there's a speaker at one end and a safety blast cap at the other end. We've got it hooked up to a grill tank, and I'm going to open this valve, and we'll light a little fire. In fact, we'll light a whole lot of fire. We'll light some fire this way too. Now, right now, the tube is full of air. So we got to get rid of all that air in order to get the fire lit. There, we're good. Now, everybody's seen a grill work, or you've seen a burn around your stove at home. If you turn the valve down, the fire goes down. If you turn the valve up, the fire goes up, right? Now, here's one you've never seen before. If you look really close at this long tube, you see how that kind of shimmers like in a wave? You know why? Because we're talking. Now here's where it gets neat. If you put a sound in the end of the tube, how many people in here have ever played like a clarinet or any kind of instrument you blow in? How many people like you know have heard the pipe organ at church and things like that? These machines all work by a resonant air cavity. This is a big pipe with a speaker at one end. So if we put a sound into it, we can make this pipe resonate. And since it's filled with a, a gas, and that gas is under pressure, and we can change the pressure, we should be able to see the waves in the fire. Because wherever there's a flame, there's a leak in the tube. There's a little tiny hole. So if we put a sound into the tube, if the sound gets louder, it goes up. But look, you can see the waves. So that's the resonance inside the tube. So. If the tube resonates at different frequencies, if we change the frequency, the waveform gets like if, if we take the frequency down, the waveform gets longer, right? The wavelength increases as the frequency goes down. So if we take the frequency down, they move. We didn't invent it, but it's called a Rubens tube, and it's a really good example of why the heat group exists. It's really simple. This is easy to make, but you could never do this in a public school because there's fire and you kill the innocent children! Are you dead yet? Are you alright? You're not like burned or blind or bleeding. You're fine, see? This is what we can do here. We get to play with all the awesome toys. So that's the high voltage lamp. Thank you all for coming and seeing our course. No, it just, uh, actually the problem is if you turn the fire up too high, it'll blow itself out. Um, it's everything, it's, it's a really big thing with all of our demonstrations and stuff like this, that they're inherently safe. The, the worst thing that could possibly happen with this is if there was a leak around the end, we had it happen once with the speaker, and that's why we have this really big plastic block, where if you have straight gas, it will not burn. If you have straight air, it will not burn. Gas only burns in a very tiny ratio of gas to air mix. We hit the mix just right one time, and it popped the cap off the end. That's why instead of this being welded together, because if it was welded together, you'd get boom, and that would be bad. This is just a piece of plastic, and it's held in with a piece of electrical tape. So it's strong enough that the gas, which is only at about five PSI, will is easily sealed in there. 
but if the pressure in here got too high, it'd just shoot that off the end. And it's a big pop gun at that point, like the, the old ones that you see with the cork in the cartoons and pop guns, same kind of thing. And this won't kill somebody. Any other questions? Cool! You guys have fun. I'm going to return you to Dave's capable hands, and I'm going to go back to teaching people how milling machines work. So. Milling machines? <laughs> yep, you'll be able to see the video in a couple weeks, it'll be up. Ready to take one? Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. 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 Roll camera. Rolling. Solutions. On set. And action. Can you, can you get up? Uh, I don't think so. This is Victor, December 10th, experiment, experiment 17, concludes 9.02 p.m. I still think I fixed the papillary muscles. left circumflex artery, but the ventricular repolarization, I, I don't know, just something's wrong with the T wave. I, I can't figure out the electrical connection. Maybe I'm not rebooting the brainstem with enough voltage. The arms, the arms have exceptionally good intervenal structure. Maybe if I work quick enough. I could possibly reuse them. Come on down!